All right, the last big, very important thing that we're going to be asked about often. Uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about how bureaucratic agencies are independent. They're just doing a regular job every day. They don't think about it as a Republican or Democrat way to do things. They don't really change much from president to president or Congress to Congress. Um, but we do need to talk about how Congress and the president can exercise control over the bureaucracies despite their independence. All right, first of all, let's go back to the independence of the bureaucracy. Remember, most of the jobs that are done are totally nonpartisan. Like, there is nothing Republican or Democratic about dropping off the mail. There's nothing Republican or Democrat about clean water or things like that. So the jobs that the bureaucracies are supposed to do, they don't need to be political. Uh, usually they are, they are designed to be outside of the political concerns. So things like policing, mail delivery, collecting taxes, uh, controlling pollution, and stuff like that. Those are all things that should stay the same all the time. They should be the same when there's a Republican president or a Democratic president. Uh, they're just doing regular jobs that have nothing to do with politics, but they're providing services. So these services uh, should be delivered the same way all the time. And the, the reason here, the bureaucracy is made up of the experts. Sure, these people may be Democrats or Republicans, but they go to their job to be the experts. They don't go to their job to be the Democrat mailman or the Republican uh, tax collector or whatever. They're just people doing their everyday job the same way, regardless of who's in charge. Now, the president is going to want some control over how these agencies do things. Of course, one of the reasons they, they ran for president might be because they were unhappy with the way that bureaucracy is doing things. So the biggest control that the president has over the bureaucracy is that the president picks the people. They get to appoint the people to run the agencies. So the choices they make uh, have impacts over how the policy gets carried out, right? So if for the difference between Obama and Trump, Obama picked uh, environmentalists, people that had a history of like doing lawsuits and stuff to protect the environment to run the Environmental Protection Agency. President Trump uh, picked a person to run the uh, Environmental Protection Agency that ran an energy company. So under Obama, the EPA worked to enforce uh, pollution laws very rigorously. Under President Trump, the agency worked to eliminate pollution laws that harmed businesses. So when you pick a person to be in charge of that agency, that has a lot of impact over how the agency carries out its policy. The other thing the president can do here, remember executive orders. When a president issues an executive order, it's just an, a demand or an order. It's a directive to the bureaucracy. The president is their boss and says, hey, I'm the president. Do it this way. And so executive orders can change the way that the bureaucracy does things. The other thing uh, the president has, right? Remember, the president has the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget. It's part of the bureaucracy, but they have a lot of control over the budget. So the OMB may recommend to the president, hey, you should increase the budget of this agency or you should decrease the budget of this agency. And that would definitely impact how those agencies were able to provide services. The president can also uh, request new agencies. The, one of the ones we've talked about lately is Department of Homeland Security. September 11th happened. George W. Bush did not like the way that, uh, that the government was unprepared for that. And so he asked Congress, hey, can you give me a new agency that would reorganize a lot of our security stuff together so maybe we can prevent problems like this? So the president can reorganize the bureaucracy as long as Congress cooperates. But these are all ways that the president can exercise a lot of control over how the bureaucracy does things. Congress is also going to have a lot of control over the bureaucracy. A lot of these agencies, uh, especially cabinet departments, some of the other agencies here, uh, they have to approve the person that the president picks for those agencies. So that gives uh, the Senate at least a lot of influence over the choice of the person to run things. But the bigger powers that Congress has, this is what really important, Congress can have the oversight hearings, right? That's what was going on in the picture at the beginning here. Congress can hold an oversight hearing. If they don't like what an agency is doing, they can call those people in to testify before Congress and explain what they're doing or why they're doing it that way. Uh, based on what happens in the hearing or based on what Congress thinks, Congress controls the agency's budget. So Congress has power to control what the money does or how much money they have 
Congress can impact what the agency is able to do. So if Congress doesn't like what the agency is doing, they'll cut the budget. The agency is not able to do it as well or as much. Congress thinks they're not, you know, they need to be doing a better job. Congress might increase the budget or something like that. Congress is also able to pass laws, and they can pass laws saying this agency must do this this way. Uh, they can pass laws to get rid of an agency or to create a new agency. Um, if the president proposes one, they can create it. If the president doesn't propose one, they can create these agencies. And then these agencies have a role in providing the services to us. So Congress has a huge amount of control over the bureaucracy as well. All right, we're also going to talk about, very quickly, we'll go through deregulation. So we'll be talking about the removal of regulations and how that uh, impacts the way services are delivered. So an agency where this has been happening a lot recency, recently is the FCC. We'll end up talking about this a lot in our media unit, but when the FCC removes rules for how uh, TV channels or radio stations operate, that has a huge impact on us in terms of the information that we receive. So let's look at what deregulation means and why the government might do this. All right, now let's start. First of all, there are a lot of regulations, right? All these agencies have made rules about how their part of the economy operates. So there are like, you know, thousands and thousands of regulations out there. Um, government regulations impact companies. They impact people all over. So like people that do business, when the government or a bureaucratic agency makes a rule, that impacts how businesses operate. And uh and this, it may, be, it may make things costly for businesses. It might just create obstacles for businesses and things like that. And so uh, there's a lot of regulations out there, and we have arguments about whether there are enough regulations or whether we need to get rid of regulations that exist. So typically, in our political battles, liberals typically want there to be more government regulation, especially in the economy. They want lots of regulation. They think the government should have a lot of power to make a lot of rules about how things get done. Conservatives typically want fewer regulations. They think that the market should have more power over how the uh, economy operates. And so there's always going to be this political struggle between liberals and conservatives where liberals will want more regulations and conservatives will argue for less. So when there are less regulations, that's what we call deregulation. Let's talk about uh, why people would argue for deregulation. All right, so people that want deregulation, they're going to make a lot of claims and these these claims make a lot of sense. So if uh, like people, like uh, businesses and stuff, they'll say that government regulations make their business more expensive to operate, whether it's safety laws or minimum wage laws or maybe rules about how they produce something or rules about uh, the, the standards that those goods might have to meet. Those regulations make production more expensive. So the more regulations you got rid of, the company would be better able to reduce the prices of those goods. So people will argue that regulations make things expensive. Deregulation can lower the prices. Um, a lot of other countries in the world don't have all of the same regulations as we do. American businesses have to operate under certain rules. Other countries might not have those same rules. And so the businesses in the United States are not they're not able to compete fairly with businesses around the world. So American businesses would argue that this that deregulation would make their companies more competitive uh, if they if there were less rules for them to follow. Currently, with a lot of regulations, American businesses they would say are less competitive than in other parts of the world. So if they want to make uh, if they want to make businesses more competitive, there should be less regulations here. And of course, with any government policy. Uh, when regulations are put into place, they're often going to have unintended consequences. So the government might think this regulation is a good idea. When you put it into place, uh, it may or may not solve its problem effectively, but it may even create a new problem that they didn't think of. And that would be a reason to get rid of these regulations. All right, that is it for today. Let's take a look at our big ideas here. Um, we're going to talk about, the, you know, make sure we remember the different ways that the bureaucracy is able to make policy and especially uh, make a, take a look at the ways that the other branches are able to control those. So from everything that we've talked about today, what you should absolutely make sure that you understand and can write about would be rulemaking and administrative discretion. So remember with rulemaking, we're talking about how agencies make the details of the law. 
We want to know why they do that, and we want to know examples of those uh, details. So make sure we remember, like, Congress doesn't have time, but the agencies do. Congress is a policy generalist, but the agencies are specialists. Um, and so rulemaking, really, really important here. Administrative discretion, also important. Each individual person uh, wants, uh, each individual person has control over how the law gets enforced. Your book keeps using this example of a police officer might give you a warning for speeding. That is an example of a street level bureaucrat making a decision about the law. So a lot of power in the hands of our street level bureaucrats who are uh, distributed, they're, they're enforcing the law, distributing the service. It's also very important, we get asked about this a lot, how does the president control the bureaucracy? How does Congress control the bureaucracy? So make sure you remember that. Remember, the president puts people in charge. The president can issue executive orders to tell those agencies how to operate. Congress can hold hearings to investigate the bureaucracy, and Congress can control their budget. So these are the most important, super important things for us to remember about the bureaucracy. All right, that's it for the federal bureaucracy. We did it. We made it through what I think might be the most boring stuff uh, that we ever have to deal with. It is definitely very, very important stuff. It is the biggest part of the government. It's part of the government we're going to interact with the most, but it's just not that exciting to talk about people in offices all day. But you have made it, so there's a lot to deal with here, a lot about how the executive branch operates. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our last branch of government. We're going to be shifting uh, in the next couple days here. We'll be shifting over to the judicial branch.